Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com forward slash rive to receive the top 10 stocks to buy right now. A stock going up 10x in a short period of time, even just the course of five years, is really a tall task for any company. But I think there are a few stocks out there that have been speeding up so much that their opportunity is potentially 10x if they can turn their operations around. I want to highlight three of those for you today. Before we get there, I do want to ask you to subscribe to Rive Investing. It really helps out the show, helps other people find the show as well. Give this video a like and leave any comments that you have about these stocks or others below. So the first company that I want to talk about is Virgin Galactic. This is one of the SPAC companies that has been really beaten up uh, and for good reason. They've delayed the launches of their uh, space tourism product, which is uh, was supposed to launch a couple of years ago. Uh, that was the projection when they went public via SPAC. That has been delayed for a number of reasons. But they have said as recently as in the last couple of months that they're going to reach commercial oper operations in the middle of 2023. So let's look at the stock. Right now, the company is worth a little bit less than a billion dollars. And they have $1.1 billion of cash and no debt on the balance sheet. So this is a company that could technically just liquidate itself and return more money to shareholders. Now, they're not going to do that. They are burning about $100 million per quarter. Uh, at least that was the, the case until they get to this commercial operations point. So that, that might go up a little bit. But if you think about where they're going, if they succeed in getting their aircraft or their spacecraft off the ground and getting commercial operations going, they're going to potentially be making 2 to $3 million dollars per flight for just four to six people uh, to go into space for a few minutes. They have projected that each one of their space ports, which is kind of the, the mini airport that they have, could generate about a billion dollars in revenue, given the fact that they actually raised their prices from about $250,000 per seat to over $400,000 per seat last year. This is a company that should have pretty good margins when they reach some sort of scale that would probably be a couple of years from now. But they have the cash to provide enough runway to get to that point. And if they do, I don't think it's unreasonable to think that this is a stock that could 10x. Now, it's possible that they run into other problems. And it's it's even possible that they aren't able to get off the ground and this business just goes bankrupt. So we need to understand that with these stocks, these are very high risk and high reward. But this is one of the companies that I just look at right now and I think... The market is pricing it as if it is already going to go bankrupt. And we simply don't know that right now. If their product works as planned in 2023, we could see this stock really take off as people get more interested in traveling to space. So put this one on your radar. I think this is a high risk, high reward, but definitely very high potential stock. The second one I want to talk about is Melco Resorts. This one is much more down to earth. This is a casino company that operates primarily in Macau, which was formerly the largest gambling region in the world. It was about six times the size of the Las Vegas Strip from a gambling revenue perspective, but it was really hammered by the pandemic. If you remember, China has been in a zero COVID policy for th about three years now. Macau shut down as early as February, 2020. So before a lot of us had even heard about the pandemic, they were shutting down operations to try to uh, get to zero COVID. That obviously hasn't worked out. And now China is starting to reverse course. So the revenue decline that we have seen in Macau may finally start to come back. I want to put that decline into perspective. In 2019, Macau generated $36.4 billion of gambling revenue. In the last 12 months and in November 2022, the region generated $5.8 billion of gambling revenue. Now, that's a lot of money, That's but that's nowhere near the $36.4 billion that they generated in 2019. Back then, Melco Resorts generated $1.7 billion of adjusted EBITDA. EBITDA is a, a proxy for cash flow generation from resorts and casinos because you spend a lot of money up front to build these resorts. And then from a financial perspective, net income includes non-cash costs like depreciation and amortization. So EBITDA pulls those numbers out and says, here's kind of what the cash flow coming from these resorts are. They generated $1.7 billion dollars. You can see here that their market cap today is only $5.2 billion. And that's after the stock about doubling. If I had done this video a few weeks ago, this would look a little bit better. 
uh, because the stock would be even cheaper. But I think there's still a lot of potential for this company. One of the reasons is if we look at what happened in Las Vegas, Las Vegas was doing about $6 billion of gambling revenue on the Las Vegas Strip pre-pandemic. Right now, they're doing about $8 billion. So that's more than Las Vegas Strip has ever generated in gambling revenue. People obviously kind of went crazy after the pandemic. And in the U.S., the lockdown was only a month or maybe six months a year, depending on where you were living and, and what your view on the pandemic was. So if people went that crazy in the U.S., what are, what are numbers going to look like in Macau, in China, in other parts of Asia where this zero COVID policy and lockdowns have been, placed, been in place for three years. I think we could see record numbers in Macau within the next couple of years. And if that's the case, these stocks could go to all-time highs. That's where you get the potential for a company like Melco Resorts to 10X in value. And the final one is another really unloved stock right now. That's Asana. This is a software company that makes products for small businesses and enterprises, productivity tools, really, really simple to use and they've gained a lot of traction over the last few years, but they're burning money like crazy. You can see from this chart, the company has only has a market cap of $2.9 billion. They've grown revenue from a little over $120 million three years ago to over $500 million today. So really rapid growth rate. It's not unusual for them to report 40, 50, 60% revenue growth the problem is net income and cash burn is just un simply unsustainable. $400 million. They're burning almost as much in cash as they are generating in revenue. That's unsustainable for any company. But there are a few reasons to think that this is one of the SaaS companies that may be able to make it out of this. One is the company's founder and CEO, Dustin Moskovitz. He was one of the founders of Facebook. So he has more money than he knows what to do with, has been buying back Asana stock, was as long ago as a year ago at a much higher price, put about a billion dollars into the company's stock, recently put $350 million into a, a private offering of stock just to keep, give the company more cash. So he will definitely keep the company afloat one way or another. I think that is probably not in question right now. Operationally, they may have some tailwinds behind them as well. So it does appear based on their recent quarterly report that enterprise customers are not cutting seats or, or you know cutting Asana from the budget. They're actually leaning into a product like this, probably because it's a little bit more cost effective than, than some of their bigger competitors. Now, where Asana is losing uh, some ground is the growth in some of the small and medium businesses. That was kind of like the top of the funnel for that sales channel. So what we're going to have to see over time is Asana improve their margins, maintain lower operating costs and hopefully get to cash flow break even. They've said that they want to do that by the end of 2024. If they do, this is a company that I think could be far more valuable. It could also be a company that acquires some of the small competitors, SaaS companies that it can bolt on and make features in the Asana product. So this is an interesting company, not just for the products that it makes and the financials that it has, because there are a lot of questions about it, but the founder that it has kind of gives it a backstop. And we have seen in the past that these deep pocketed founders are not going to let their companies fail. They're going to find a way through this and use the money that they have to come out the other side better. I think Asana is a company that may do that. And given a $2.9 billion market cap, it's definitely a company that over the next five to 10 years could double in value. So again, another high risk, high reward play, but I like Asana along with Melco Resorts and Virgin Galactic right now. What do you think about those three stocks? Is 10X in, in value crazy even just for one of them? Leave your comments in the comments section below. Subscribe to Rive Investing, I really appreciate it. And I will see you here next time.